Hey, OCHEM students, welcome to the second semester of Organic Chemistry. My name is Ben Asman, I'll be your instructor today. Our first experiment is going to start, so make sure you have your lab goggles and your closed toed shoes. Today's experiment can be the Diels Alder reaction of 3 sulfonine and malic anhydride. Let's get to it. Diels Alder, everybody's favorite pericyclic reaction. That means all the electrons flow in a circle. This is a pi 2 plus 4 addition, where four par electrons are provided by our diene, which is 1,4 butadiene, and two pi electrons are provided by our dienophile, also known as malic anhydride. 1,4 butadiene is a gas, so we'll have a hard time measuring it. Instead, what we do is we use 3 sulfonine. 3 sulfonine decomposes into 1,4 butadiene with the presence of heat. Now, malic anhydride is water sensitive, so we don't want to wash any of our glassware today if you haven't washed it already. If you insist on washing it, make sure you use a little bit of acetone to dry it out, otherwise you're going to have some problems. As an additional precaution, what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a drying tube to make sure no water comes in during the reaction. When you're making your drying tube, what you want to do is grab yourself a few little pieces of cotton, roll them up into little balls just like that, grab the first one, put it in, just like you're making a cannon, just go ahead and shove it in there using a the pet. A little metal rod, you're going to put it about that far in, grab yourself your drying agent, in this case we're using calcium chloride. Calcium chloride, little tiny beads, you're going to fill it up just a little bit, it will get a little messy, make sure you clean up a bit afterwards. It takes about, usually about two scoopfuls, anything above two or three fingers width, in this case I have about three fingers width, is good enough. Grab yourself your other cotton ball, top it off, tamp it in so it doesn't move anywhere, and that's it. You gotta make sure though that you clean this out with a little bit of air before you finish otherwise you're never gonna get it out of there ever again. So when you're making a measurement you probably want to measure directly into your round bottom flask. To do that the best thing you can do is grab yourself one of these little cups, your weight cups, and use that to hold up the round bottom. Go ahead and zero the scale. Make sure you have what you need with you. 3-sulfonine, malic anhydride, a book which tells you what you want, and a place to write of exactly the measurements you'll take. Now you, one of these two is going to be your limiting reactant, so you want to be relatively delicate with, with this, unlike when you're taking the solvents where you can have a little bit of leeway. So, there we go. I got 8.9, not perfect, but we'll do for now. 0 0.892 grams. There we go. For this, we'll need one mil of xylene. The xylene comes already with a pipette that's pre-graduated. If you can see, you would make it all the way to the top, and that's going to give you the one milliliter that you're going to need. So we're not going to even use one of these guys, which is going to go straight into this. If you have a little bit of extra, that's fine. Solvent, give or take a bit, it's fine. Next up, we're going to be building our apparatus. Please note that our clamp at the bottom here is actually connected directly to the round bottom. At top is our little yellow K clamps. That just connects between the two pieces at the top. There's nothing but gravity holding together the rest of it. And that's good enough. Notice also the thermometer is mounted. Once you have it all set up, turn on your heat. Don't start the time until you see some reflux. So you notice that my temperature right here is about 110. That's a little bit low, but nonetheless, if you look, I can see some definite boiling. And on the glass right there, you can see those little tears. That is condensation. Therefore, this is refluxing. I can go ahead and start the timer. We have about five minutes before the end of our reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves that xylene. Go ahead and put that onto the hot plate to heat up, because that's the only way it's going to get hot. Okay, time's up. It's been bubbling for half an hour. Now we need to remove it from the heat. To do that, the best way is just to unscrew this one screw back here that holds it to the upright. Go ahead and lift the entire thing without even touching any of the hot pots, screw it back on, and just let it cool to room temperature. At this point, you really don't need any of this other piece, so I'm just go ahead and take that off, put that aside, and let this cool. Once this is cool a bit, go ahead and take your hot xylene, there we go, and we're going to just pour it in. You might see some crystals, you might not. Uh, either way, it's not that important. Okay, once you have this point, what you need to do is transfer it into a little beaker where you're going to be doing your recrystallization. Here's the little beaker I got. There's two ways to go ahead and do this. One is with a pipette, at which point you're just going to go ahead and slowly pipette everything out. This will take a while to do. Your other option, of course, 
is if this is cold enough to touch, you can go ahead and just pour it. Just make sure you leave behind that boiling chip. Once you got all of it out, what I want you to do is go ahead and rinse this down with a little bit more xylene, preferably hot xylene, and then go ahead and pipette it back out again. For our next step, what we're going to be doing is adding some petroleum ether until it becomes a little cloudy. This is what we're going to do drop-wise. Just add a few drops, let it stir a bit, add a few drops, let it stir a bit. Here we go, we got ourselves a little bit of cloudiness. Now put that to heat up and dissolve back into the petroleum ether. There we go, it's gone pretty clear. We can go ahead and pull it out, let it cool to room temperature. Once your compound has reached room temperature, go ahead and stick it in an ice bath so you can finish recrystallizing. Once you got your stuff in an ice bath, what you want to do is grab yourself a little filter flask, a Buechner funnel, and the matching filter paper. It should fit in nice and snug. Other than that, what you want to get yourself is one of these big three ring ones. They can fit in nice and tight with this. Hold that into place. Make your life a whole lot easier. Once you attach your flask, go ahead and grab yourself one of these nice big hoses. These are the rubber hoses for vacuum. That's what you want. Attaches to the yellow. Go ahead and connect your actual funnel right there on top. Go ahead and turn the vacuum on. Once your product comes to the temperature of the ice, go ahead and pull it out. You should see by now some nice, big, needle-like crystals. Let's see if I can get that shot. Go ahead and swirl around your compound in the beaker until it's all suspended. Then dump it in all at once. That's your compound, those nice white crystals. We suspend whatever's left in the beaker with a little bit more petroleum ether. Then go ahead and dump it into the vacuum filter as well. Let this stand a few minutes to dry. Measure the weight, bag it, tag it, you're done.